So, genuine content. Genuine content works, apparently. Unfortunately, this is general content. This is general, genuine content. Which is to say, it's not. It's banal, apathetic, nothingness. I'm driving, running errands. I just went to the store, I got groceries, driving back. This is a day in the life of a normal human being. The majority of your day is spent doing nothing. A banal, empty, personally right now, aesthetically very pleasing, it's a nice, beautiful, crisp autumn morning. I'm driving in a road that I actually really like. It reminds me a ton of the neighborhood where I grew up. Not the actual neighborhood, of course, because I've visited that recently. And, you know, it's nice, but this reminds me of the neighborhood of my youth, of my youth. You know, the nostalgic place that really only exists in my memories. For whatever reason, the, the quality of light, the, the trees, the people, the specific architecture, the types of houses that are here, for whatever reason, they, they call that to mind. And I always enjoy driving down here. But it's still, a, you know, an empty, pointless, waste of space and time. You know? Like, if I were rich, would I still be making this drive? Maybe. For that nostalgic experience. But not for running errands. I, yeah. Would I be going to the store? Would I be doing this for that reason? Almost certainly not. But this is a genuine experience. And this is the thing that people are craving, apparently. To hear the YouTube algorithm speak, this is the thing that they're looking for. They're looking for real experiences. But they're not looking for real reality. They're looking for a curated experience. That's why I'm, you know, I'm talking over this. The real cure, you know, the real experience of this is, you know, I've got my radio on. Maybe I'm talking, but that's because I always talk to myself. If I've got something on my mind. Like right now, the radio's off. Why is the radio off? Because I don't want to be demonetized. To be honest, I was recording for, you know, I don't know, five minutes. Some, uh, you know, Phil Collins song was on. I was singing along with it and having a, you know, pretty good old time. But then I decided, no. Yeah, I'm going to make a YouTube video. It's going to be real. It's going to be really real. Driving in dead silence. Talking to myself. That's reality. That's reality. That's genuine. Now, I mean, yes, it is. This is obviously, you know, my voice. I suppose you'd call it my real speaking voice. But I'm also aware of the fact that this is probably going to go on the internet. So I'm not going to say anything wild and crazy, even if I, you know, obviously didn't mean it, it was a joke, it was, you know, it was that, you know, there, because it exists forever. It exists outside of time and context, outside of reality, as we have come to know it. The only reality is virtual. How many people is that true? The virtual reality of their lives dictates more of their lived experience than, you know, this. Outside. Even, even in this. Even in this metal cage. You know, flying through the world. And this is still much more natural. This is still much more, you know, traditional. And YouTube, social media, any of that type of stuff, you know. And 
yet we let the virtual decide our lives. Yeah. I suppose that's the bargain we struck. Those are the things that we're going to deal with. Maybe the trade-off's good. Maybe it makes sense. Certainly there are upsides, and those are the reasons why the people that perceive these things, you know, built these platforms and things. But under that, is that what they're going to be? Is that what they're going to actually turn into in, you know, 20, 30, 50 years, 100 years? Uh, or are they going to be the stepping stone to, you know, pod people, matrix style virtual reality? And who's to say we wouldn't enjoy that more? Mm. We probably would, because we'd be able to curate it more. But then, where would you be finding your genuine content, your genuine experience? Who knows? I don't know. 